So the 77th commemoration of Hack Wilson becoming the first player to hit a homer off the Wrigley Field scoreboard. And the 41st celebration of the Yankees' Joe Pepitone tying a major league record by hitting two home runs in one inning. Green's four round trippers also tied the MLB top mark, but his 19 total bases that day were a big league best ever. Green is on fire on May 23rd, a 448 batting average. A year ago, one of his four homers came off Glendon Rush, who gives up the RBI single to Green in his first at bat. Top three Dodgers down 4-2, and it's Green and Rush again, and it's going to be a single again. Rush is ERA against the Dodgers in three career starts coming into this game. 16-20 for Green, his eighth hit in his last eight at-bats. Top five, Green and Rush, and oh, Green goes down swinging, but Rush couldn't hold on. Seventh inning, two on, thanks to Rush. He's gone. And so is John Foster's first pitch to Green. A three-run homer. Sean Green, three for five Friday. All told, he's batting 552 at Miller Park with 17 RBI, 49 total bases, and just seven career games. That was a boom, boom, out go the lights shot because the lights actually did go out. And then somebody faxed in the check. They got the lights turned on, and in came Guillermo Mota. He pitched three innings for his first major league save in his 198th appearance. Too many appearances for Eric Gagne. Dodgers get the 6-4 win. It's their eighth straight W. Giants opening a four-game series at Coors. Barry back in the lineup after spraining an ankle last Wednesday against Arizona. How's that ankle? Well, it's looking pretty good here. Singles in the first off Sean Chacon. Next up, Benito Santiago. And Benito Santiago had himself a big day. Three for five. Double to left center. That ankle looks just fine on Barry. They're going to wave him in all the way from first. It's one nothing San Fran. But they would trail 8-1 in the fifth. And here's Bonds again. And this is deep to right off the wall. But look at Barry. Trouble now. It's not the ankle. It's the knee. Strange right patella tendon. Barry Bonds limps off the field. And he would leave the game. Did not return in the sixth. Todd Helton, a huge day. Home run number seven on the area at four hits. Drove in for Rockies beat the Giants. Ten. A week ago, Day was making news again, but for reasons less celebratory. He was ejected at Colorado for using a foreign substance to cover a blister on his pitching hand. That's against the rules, although afterward, the home plate umpire said he didn't think Day was trying to cheat. The substance? Super glue. Day has been just that for the Expo staff. He's 4-1, has nearly a 4-1 to one ground ball to fly out ratio. Going to need all that and more facing Kelvin, Kevin Millwood, who's looking to become the NL's first seven-game winner. Speaking of looks, here's a legal flashback to Saturday. Day with the aforementioned illegal use of glue, a, a sticky situation. He's not related to Boots Day, is he? <laughs> How would he Former respond? Expo great. And Yuppie. Was Yuppie there? That's what I want to know. Nice way. Nice Jimmy job. Rollins. He pays him, him, and then Marlon Bird, he plasters him. Third inning, day is going to come unglued. They're giving up a leadoff single to Pat Burrell. He gives up the go-ahead two-run homer to Bobby Abreu. His seventh. It's 3-1 Phillies. Meanwhile, Millwood up two. Said he didn't have his best stuff. Jose Vidro may disagree, although he doubled later. Brian Schneider. No comment. Millwood allows two runs and six hits over seven innings. As for Jim Tomei, can't get enough of your glove and hustle. Fielding the Henry Mateo butt, then beating him to first. Phillies win it 4-2. All right, the Cubs mark Pryor on the mound in Houston. Lowest ERA in the National League, 2.02. Pryor, since his Major League debut, look at these numbers, 11-7, 2.87. 10.9 Ks per nine innings. Opponents hitting only 221 off the Cubs stud. But bottom first already in trouble. Orlando Merced slices one into right. One run comes to charge. All right. Three two Astros. Where's Brian Kenny when you need him? Next batter, Jose Viscaino. And this turns into the worst inning of Pryor's career. Three run shot is first of the season. Pryor tag for six earned on seven hits and six and two third at six three Astros. Bottom four, they're loaded for Jeff Bagwell. And Bagwell into the 4 6 3 to end the inning. Bagwell has a 13 game streak now without an RBI. Bottom seven, Jeff Kent to right. Astros win this one 7 5. They have won 11 of 14 at home. The Cubs struggling somewhat. They've lost five of seven overall. Kansas City at Oakland, scoreless in the second. Brent Main. Singling off Mark Mulder, who's 4-0 career against the Royals. Eric Burns, his throw is going to get away from Ramon Hernandez. After
Victor and Harvey. Barrel rolls him. Harvey a double KC up one zip. Oh, well, Harvey gets his props. Ace third base coach Ron Washington earns his salary. Mark! Third base! Harvey did miss third and is out on the appeal. Scoreless game intact. Fifth inning. A's on the board twice. Mulder on his game. Carlos Faylis, no. Ninth inning. Mulder has lost his shutout, but not his major league leading fifth complete game. 4-1 athletics in a game that needed just two hours and five minutes to go final. Tight. Twins in Seattle. Brad Radke, Jamie Moyer, top one. Torrey Hunter. This off Moyer. This has gone for a home run, but Mike Cameron's bringing it back. Let my Cameron go. Take another look. You know, that junior trade worked out pretty well. Cameron follows the ball right into his glove. Bottom one now, Cameron facing Radke. Dramatic pause. Doubles to right scoring Edgar Martinez, 3-0 Mariners as Radke allowed two earned, five runs overall on nine hits in only five innings. Top seven now, it's 5-2 Seattle. Christian Guzman at the plate. Jock Jones is on second. There's one out, Guzman to center. But Jones thinks there's two out, so he starts jogging in. Uh-oh, Cameron unassisted DP. Mariners win the game 5-2. Texas, Rangers have won a season high six straight. Rafael Palmero hasn't had a home run his last eight games, and he was seven for 42 career with seven Ks against Pat Hinkin. Well, make him eight for 43 with home run number 501, first in 27 at-bats, and his family's excited. They're also celebrating Buck Showalter's 47th birthday, and we know all that Buck wants is cotton uniforms because, after all, cotton is a natural fiber. What a fabric. Bottom fifth, tied at three in Palmero. He's a natural hitter. Rips a shot to right field. And that looks like 5-0-2 in his second of the game. Rangers go up 4-3. Umpires say below the yellow line ruled a single. Bottom seven, Texas up 4-3. And Rangers came into the game leading the majors in home runs. Palmero foul. Missed it by that much. Went two for three with three ribs. Rangers win it 5-3. Drive to Fenway Park, Cleveland's Ricardo Rodriguez winless since April 13th and he had a dicey first inning in Boston. No my para. Single to left, hitting streak to 23, longest in the majors this year. Got 12 hits in his first plate appearance during that streak. Still in the first, Bill Miller. And it, oh, over Ben Broussard, Manny comes in, 2 nothing Red Sox. Miller two for four, this guy's on fire. He's hitting 385, 24 of his 45 hits have been for extra bases this year. Next batter, Shea Hillenbrand. And, uh-oh, something happened there, hold on. It's foul! Why? Well, check it out, the ball double hits off the bat of Hillenbrand, and he's still in the batter's box. That's a double hit, so it's foul. Next pitch now, and this one is not foul. Shea Hillenbrand, off that big green thing out there, just under the new seats. Trot Nixon comes in, they wave Miller as well. Five, nothing Boston, and that was plenty for Derek Lowe. Had 19 ground ball outs in this game, a four hitter. His first complete game of the season. Top five, Brandon Phillips. And there's No Magasia Para. Low at home, 3 0, 1.53. On the road, 1 3, 11.57. Please. Yankees, losers of eight of nine at home, hosting Toronto. They have home issues of their own. Derek Jeter, a late scratch, rainy weather, got that tender left hammy. Mike Musina did not have a good day. Top two, he walks leadoff batter Greg Myers, and Mike Bordick, single to center. Myers comes in, they wave Eric Hinsky as well, so it's 2-1 Toronto. Bordick ties a career high, he's got a 13-game hitting streak. Top four now, Musina again in trouble. Again, it's his fault, he walks the leadoff guy. It's Hinsky, free pass. Shannon Stewart is up now. Eventually. And that's up the middle. Hinsky scores 4-1 Toronto. Mucina loses his third straight start. He gave up four runs on seven hits in the first four innings. Bottom eight down 6-1 now. Canyon Sturtz hits Jorge Posada. That's the third time in two days Jorge's been hit. He's not happy. Next up, Hideki Matsui. Oh, he got all of that one. 1-6-3 one, deep. Posada called out for base runner interference over here. He would be ejected. Just taking guys out there. It's hard, aggressive baseball. Blue Jays win 6-2. The Yankees, uh, we said, having problems in the Bronx. They have lost five straight and nine of ten now at Yankee Stadium. 
Houston Braves with an 11-game lead over the Mets as these two swing for the first time this season. Jeremy Burnett's first action since breaking his hand on April 22nd, a Billy Wagner pitch did that. Sixth inning, Mets up 2-1 with the sacks full, and Burnett's will chase Russ Ortiz and collect his first Grand Slam since September of 2001 when he was a Brewer. Seventh granny of his career, fourth homer this season. Seventh inning. Gary Sheffield, bartender. Check. The NL's leading hitter went two for five, including that solo shot. His average improves to 358. Bottom nine, two out. Armando Benitez uh, walks Chipper Jones and then box him to second. Nice. Andrew Jones is the next batter, and he'll also take the free pass. And that's going to bring up Julio Franco. Now, with the tying run at second, Art Howe had Shoshu Shinjo move in. It was a great move. The defensive replacement in the eighth will nail Chipper in the ninth. Said Benitez owed him a massage for bailing him out. Hey, whatever works. Mets win it. 6 5. Marlins taking that six game losing streak into Cincinnati to face Jeff Austin with a career high six walks in his last outing last Saturday and he's not off to a good start here walks the leadoff guy Juan Pierre then walks Luis Castillo Austin missed the strike zone with 10 of his first 11 pitches and all oh, those walks will kill you. I heard that somewhere Pudge scores Pierre it's one nothing Marlins next batter ball four to Mike Lowell. Castillo scores on the Jason LaRue pass ball. It's 2-0. Next up, Derek Lee singles to left. That scores Pudge. It's 3-0 Marlins. Next up, Juan Encarnacion to left. Lowell comes in. It's 4-0. Alex Gonzalez walks. In fact, the first seven Marlins reach base. Bob Boone pulls the plug after 30 pitches. Austin, five earned on three hits, four walks. He did not retire a batter. Marlins win a fourth. Lee. All right, Cardinals, Pirates, PNC, and Pittsburgh. Bottom one, Kenny Lofton leads off. Off Jason Simontachi. That's a good uh, start. Lofton's fifth. He's got a 21-game hitting streak now. 1-0 Pittsburgh. It was in the ninth now. 7-5. One strike away. Mike Williams, 1-2 pitch. Two out. Scott Rowland down two. Hits the three-run home run. His tenth, Tony La Russa. He's been hypnotized. 8-7 Cardinals, but... They can't stand the good fortune. Bottom nine, Cal Eldred facing Jeff Rebele, as in no way. Down the left field line, Kevin Young scores 12th blown save and 23 chances by that St. Louis bullpen, and we're tied at eight. Both teams coming back. Top 10, J.D. Drew. Off Brian Meadows to center. Kenny Lofton's back there. Off the glove, Bratomko scores. Drew is in there with a triple, and the Cardinals are up at 9 8. Albert Pujols, this guy on fire, career high five hits. It was five for six. Two RBI, two runs scored. St. Louis finally comes back and wins this game in Pittsburgh, 10 8. The Pirates are struggling. They have lost 15 of 19. In Chicago, bottom one hurts so good. Frank Thomas, Dimitri Young from his backside. Gets the force at second. I say backside. Bottom five, Jose Valentin. Foul territory. Uh-oh. Carlos Pena. House of Pena over the railing and then heads up across the diamond to get Miguel Oliva, who is tagging from second. That's a heads-up play. 2-2 two -two in the eighth. Young. Double over the head of Carlos Lee. El Caballo's out there. Ramon Santiago scores his 3-2 Tiger. So Marath has been staked to a lead. He is six outs away from that first win. Tony Graffinino, bottom eight sack bunt. Five outs to go. Jose Valentin. Browns out to first, and now there are four outs shy of Mike Marath finally getting a W. Chris Sperling strikes out Frank Thomas. Marath relieved. Mike, you got one more inning to go. Bottom nine. Sperling trying to save it. Maglio Ordonez. Two outs to go. El Caballo. That's a strikeout. One out away. We are one out away from Mike Moroth's win, people. <laughs> Paul Canerco pops up, and Mike Moroth, you are a winner, buddy. One and nine. The best one and nine pitcher in the business. It's okay. They're married. Anaheim began Friday, just one half game out of the West Basement, hosting in the East Cellar, Tampa Bay. That's Jeremy Gonzalez. Hasn't won a game in the majors since June of 98. You remember back in 98, home run chase, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Bob Barker, Price is Right, 5,000th episode. And, well, we're still trying to define what he meant by if. Remember, have your pets sprayed and neutered. <laughs> Gonzalez, oh, he was feeling it. Just ask Garrett Anderson, Brad Fulmer, and Jeff Devon. And now we go to the bottom of the six. 
Troy Gloss swinging like Glenn Miller. Six innings, two hits, one run, five Ks. Tampa Bay wins it 3-1.